Hello everyone, this is James Peterson here, and today I'm going to be talking about PowerPoint slide design basics. Um, I'm going to be talking about four things, graphics, text, uh, background, whether to use templates or dark background or light background, and also animation, uh, how to use animation effectively and whether to use animation or not. So let's start. Graphics. The key about great graphics is are they instantly understandable? You should be able to look at a picture and in just a few seconds understand the key point. So you'll see this is a little bit different than an Excel graph. Uh, one of the things is I like data labels in my graphs. I like to use images to make things uh, very clear. I get rid of a lot of grid lines just to make it a little bit simpler and instantly understandable. Um, Another thing PowerPoint is great for is diagrams. This is an office layout in Japan, and you can add labels to diagrams. So here's the windows. This is where the managers would sit. Uh, here uh, the employees are seated in order of seniority. You can see by using a diagram here, I'm able to explain a very complex seating arrangement uh, very quickly in just a few seconds, okay? And it would be very difficult to do that with just text, right? Uh, you know, visuals are, you can take visuals from Microsoft Excel as well, but just be careful when you copy and paste from Excel, the font size is a little bit small. So my recommendation is to type over to add data labels, and I'll be showing you this in another uh, presentation. All right. Uh, next thing, text. How much text should be on a screen? Uh, let's take a look. Best usage of text. For me, the best usage of text is really to explain visuals. So you have a great heading. You have your labels, which clearly explain what I'm looking at. And then you have a key point. So maybe my key point here is to focus on dogs, cats, and fish. We should stop selling turtles and other animals. Okay, um, so this is the best use of text in my mind. Um, you can also use text for quotations. When you have a very long quotation like this and you're delivering your presentation, you might just tell the audience to read. So please take a moment and look, read this and then have some silence for about 30 seconds so that they have time to read it. Or the other way is to read it yourself in a slow and clear voice. So make sure you read every word. Any intelligent fool can make things bigger and more complex. It takes a touch of genius and a lot of courage to move in the opposite direction. And this is a great uh, quote even for our PowerPoint slide design here. Um, the worst usage of text for me the worst usage is lists. Sadly, many PowerPoint slides look like this. Lots of text comes up at the same time, so your audience stops listening and starts reading the slide on their own. If you read the slide word for word, the audience will follow along. But if you go off in a tangent, the audience starts reading ahead and they're not listening to exactly what you're saying. So for me, the key point, less is more. Use as few words as possible. Images are better than text for instantly communicating communicating your ideas. Um, some people have a five by five rule for text. Basically, that means you can have five words and five lines. Um, for me, this is the absolute maximum amount of text I would like to see on a slide. For me, I'd actually, I still think this is quite wordy. I would prefer to see images. Images are much more powerful. Okay. Um, let's talk a little bit about font selection. What there are two kinds of font, a sans serif font and a serif font. This is a sans serif font and this is a serif font. With a sans serif font, you can see that all of the lines are the same thickness. With a serif font, you can see that lines are different thicknesses. Uh, this red circle here, this just shows a serif. It's a little flick on the end of the font. Um, basically, the most common sensory fonts are Arial, Verdana, and Tahoma. And the most common serif fonts are like Times New Roman, Palatino, uh, Linotype, and Century. Use serif fonts for reports, but use sans serif fonts for presentations. They're just much easier to see on a screen. So basically, I always use Arial, Verdana, or Tahoma for my presentations. Mm -hmm. um, font size. Um, if you take a look, you can see that some of these font sizes just look too small. And for me, anything under 18 is too small. Okay. The only 
The only reason I might use a font under 18 is if it's a decoration, which I don't want the audience to read because some of the audience won't be able to see it. 18 to 20 to 20 in that area, that's a borderline size. You know, sometimes I might use it for labels because I'm pressured for space, but I have to be realistic. Some people in the audience might not be able to see it. 24 is not bad. I still consider that a borderline font. My target is in the 28 to 48 range, and this is the most common font sizes that I'll use. Uh, you know, uh, sometimes I might use really big fonts, but Quite often, I don't find there's enough space on the screen for me to use those big fonts. So in general, I am in this uh, green range. Somewhere between 28 and 48 is my usual font size. Mm -hmm. um, font color. The key point is legibility. Uh, you need a good contrast like black background white text or black text white background. Uh, some other texts like green and yellow might go well together. But be very careful of the purple on purple here. It might look good on your computer, but when you get on a projector, suddenly you will realize, wait a minute, this projector isn't as powerful as the light on my computer and it won't look as legible. Also be very careful of red on blue. You know, I've read that uh, about 10% of the population is uh, colorblind and red on blue will be invisible to uh, colorblind people. Um, just a few other things. Colors, different colors have different meanings and there's different meanings in different cultures. But let's talk about North America. For me, what does red mean? Red means stop. It means defect. It means wrong. These are uh, common uses of the way I would use red. Okay, uh, I would never use red to say welcome to ABC Company. Probably I would use a blue font or another font. Okay, um, you know, use colors the way you think they should be used. You know, for me, green is an environmental color. It's something like the forest or something. Uh, black is night. Blue is cold, red is hot, uh, yellow is proceed with caution. Uh, you know, I would just use colors the way you think that they should be used, okay? Use their natural meaning. Mm -hmm. um, one other thing I'd like to say is your presentation should have a consistent look and feel throughout. In this slide here, I've used a completely different font than all my other fonts. Uh, my background is a completely different color. So don't have a have a slide like this in the middle of your presentation. You should keep a consistent look and feel throughout your presentation. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about backgrounds. Um, you'll see a lot of neat uh, templates on uh, Microsoft uh, and they look really nice. Should you use a template? For me, I often don't uh, use templates. And, uh, you know, if you're using a quote like this, it actually looks quite nice, okay? Uh, but when you have a picture or something, I often find that I can't make my picture as big as I want to because I have something on one side uh, or I might end up cutting it off. Now, templates, they do look good. Um, you just have to make a choice about whether you want to use it. For me, I avoid templates. Um, now, the other thing is you could make your own background. I like a, a simple background because then I can use every corner of the slide with my animations. Uh, but when you choose a mid-range color, you know, dark text, Text doesn't stand out so well. Light text doesn't stand out too well. Colored text, I mean, it's it's uh, more difficult when you have a mid color, a mid uh, shaded uh, color. It's much more difficult to find a good contrasting color. I think most people find a light background with dark text the easiest to see. The biggest problem with this, though, is if you're looking at a very long presentation, this is hard on your eyes. So when do I use a light background? Usually if I have a lot of text, which I want to show people, and the text size is quite small, like size 18, then I might use a light background because it will show it much uh, more clearly. Uh, but if I'm giving a a uh, long presentation, then I would tend to use a dark background with light text. Typically, I use a dark blue background with most of my presentations. Let's take a look at animations now and whether you should animate or not. For me, the biggest use of animations is to build complex slides gradually. So 
If I just threw this slide up on the screen, this was a slide I showed you before. It's too much information coming up at once and different audience members are looking at different things. Uh, so it's very important to build your complex slides gradually. The way I built it before was like this. You know, I talked about sans serif fonts, serif fonts. This is sans serif. This is serif. Uh, then I said this little flick on the end is called a serif. Uh, the most common sans serif fonts are Arial, Verdana, Tahoma. The most common serif fonts are Times New Roman, Palatino, Linotype, and Century. And then I said use sans serif fonts for your presentations. Now you can see by building a complex slide gradually, the audience knows exactly where to look. You don't need to use a laser pointer for your presentation. If I threw this list up on the screen, you know, the audience, everybody is looking at a different place. If you're going to use a list, make sure that you build your list gradually. So you don't need a pointer. Reveal text line by line. Use simple animations like appear. Don't let the audience read ahead. And I'm going to just be very clear about uh, simple animations. A lot of animations like fly in or wipe, they all take time. For most of my animations, I'm using appear because it happens instantly when I press my mouse button. Uh, one other thing is when you're building your slide, just remember the way people's eyes move in uh, English cultures. People look at the top left of the screen first and then they look towards the bottom right of the screen. So when you're building a complex object, uh, make sure that you put your first object near the top, a little bit over to the left, your second object there, your third object there. Take a look if I build objects in a strange order. It looks a little bit awkward. So try to build your slides in the way our eyes would naturally move. Um, the next thing is I'd like to show you is how to use animations to tell your story. Okay. Um, so one thing which you can use is use animated GIF images. For example, if I ask you what is a camshaft? Well, I could show you a picture of a camshaft and I still think a lot of people wouldn't know what it is. But if I go to Wikipedia and get one of these uh, GIF images from Wikipedia, it shows very clearly uh, camshaft and you can see it just at the top of the screen up here and it's opening and closing the valves. It's in the engine, it opens the intake and the exhaust valves. Okay. Um, and then here is another uh, GIF uh, animation which uh, just basically shows how that camshaft opens and closes those valves. Okay. The nice thing is there's lots of images available from Wikipedia uh, and uh, you can go to other websites like How Stuffs Works so that you can get lots of uh, useful GIF videos. Okay. Um, however, uh, quite often you can't find the video which you want, so you can make your own animations. You know, this is one which I was working on and it's got two gears and we wanted to show how the two gears press fit together. What? Take a look at how they press fit. Okay. Um, you know, you can use animations to tell a kind of story. Uh, and, you know, there's various things. So there's so many things you can do with these animations. Okay. Um, this is another thing which I used to show about good teamwork. And basically, I took pictures and I split the pictures up and then I had them come back together uh, just to, to give that idea of teamwork. Okay. Um, so there's many different ways of using animations, but just remember that animation should have a purpose. You know, this kind of animation, you know, is cute for a little while, but uh, it really doesn't have a purpose. Okay. Don't let your animations distract from your story. Okay. Uh, you know, and I think a lot of people go really crazy with animations and this little rocking back and forth here has no value to my story. So animations can help tell your story, but don't let them distract from your story. So let me conclude then graphics. Make your visuals instantly understandable uh, so that people can look at it and just in a few seconds understand exactly what you mean. Try to limit your text. When you do use text, use a sensory font. Make sure it's at least size 24 or above. Okay? Uh, make sure your backgrounds, uh, you know, you're using a very good contrasting color. You can use templates. You can use a dark background, light background, whichever. That's okay. But just make sure there's a good contrast. And animations. Use animations to 
build your slides to build a complex slide so everyone in your audience is looking at the same place or you can create animations which will tell your story Thank you.